Apple wasn't always big. In June of 2023, Apple became the first company to ever top a $3 trillion market cap. In this day and age, Apple is a household name. From phones to computers to even watches, everyone has the name Apple Inc. in their head somewhere. But it wasn't always this way. In the 80s, Microsoft's business was booming. The GUI innovations that Microsoft was making with their Windows operating system left Apple in the dust. Apple was in trouble. Apple tried time and time again to bring back the Macintosh, so to speak, in this time. But all their attempts failed. Weeks before the company's bankruptcy, an investor stepped in and invested $150 million into Apple. This investment kept Apple from bankruptcy. The next year, Steve Jobs unveiled the iMac, and it was a hit. Just a few short years later, in 2001, Apple declared that they had sold 5 million iMacs. If this investor, Apple wouldn't have been able to make the iMac, and Apple would have faded away like so many other computer companies have. This one investor saved Apple from bankruptcy, but who was it? Well, if you thought Ronald McDonald, then you'd be wrong. No, the investor was someone who worked in the same field as Apple, but as a competitor. The investor was none other than Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Why would somebody who works at a competitor invest $150 million in Apple? Well, to find that out, we need to go back back to the 80s, 15 years before the iMac was even released. This is the story of how Bill Gates saved Apple. In the early 80s, Apple was on top. After the recent success of the Apple II computer, which introduced color graphics into a computer for the first time, sales of Apple computers jumped from just $7.8 million in 1978 to a whopping $117 million in 1980. Apple was doing really well. But not everyone was happy with Apple's growth. Steve Wozniak, who was the co-founder of Apple, was getting progressively less and less happy with Apple as time went by. Wozniak worked best in small teams, but as time went on and Apple grew, so did their team. With this fact and how Steve Jobs was replaced and eventually resigned from Apple by Apple's new CEO, John Scully, Wozniak lost interest in Apple and felt less at home in Cupertino, where Apple was run. Wozniak eventually started to grow away from Apple, participating in more events away from the company, and eventually left the company in February of 1985. With the original vision of the company lost, Apple started steadily declining. Now, of course, not having Jobs and Woz wasn't the only reason Apple was declining between the late 80s and early 90s. In fact, a big reason Apple was falling behind was because of Microsoft. Whereas the 80s was a big decade for Apple's computer department, the 90s was a huge growth period for Microsoft. With the desktop GUI making its debut in Windows 1.0, which was released in 1985, to the release of Windows 95, released in 1995. Microsoft was the top dog. Because of this fact, Apple not having jobs and was, and due to the failure of many poorly made Apple products, such as the Macintosh Portable and Apple Newton, Apple was declining rapidly. Something had to change because their trajectory was only predicting them to fall more and faster than ever before. And Apple did try changing many things. First, Apple CEO John Scully was replaced by Michael Spindler, 
While an improvement over John Scully, who went on to develop some major successes for Apple, he also developed some major failures for Apple that would descend the company into further madness. And like Scully, Michael ended up being replaced in 1996 by Gil Emilio. Gil Emilio made cost-saving measures in his time as CEO, but he wasn't able to keep the company afloat. Weeks away from bankruptcy, Apple bought Next Computers, which is where Steve Jobs was working at the time, and brought Steve back onto the team. Steve convinced the board to fire Gil and make Steve interim CEO until they could find another CEO. Even with Steve aboard, there was still a bankruptcy crisis about to erupt inside of Apple if they didn't get some more money. Thus, Steve turned to Microsoft, of all companies, to help with their financial crisis. How and why did this happen? Well, first we need to understand something about Microsoft during this time. In the 90s, Microsoft, although growing, was under fire from the government many times. Between being under fire for anti-consumer practices from the Department of Justice to being investigated for Internet Explorer potentially being a monopoly, Microsoft did not want another bad press week. However, if Apple went bankrupt, Microsoft could be further investigated for having a monopoly on the computer market. Because of this, in 1997, Steve Jobs was able to persuade Bill Gates to invest in Apple. With the money crisis averted for the moment, Steve started making a lot of changes. In the coming months, Steve cut 75% of the Apple lineup at the time, which led to thousands of people being laid off. He made deals with many companies and even launched the Apple Store website. The company ended that year making over $300 million. But Jobs wasn't finished yet. In May of the next year, Apple unleashed a new product that rivaled the original Macintosh in terms of success. It was a new, groundbreaking device that would change the computer industry forever. It was called the iMac. It was a commercial success, selling 800,000 units in the first six months. And if it weren't for Bill Gates, Apple would not exist today. Thanks for watching.